Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Travel Bites. And if you are new here, do consider hitting that subscribe button so you can follow along with my travels around Asia. So today, we're gonna talk about a big question that a lot of travelers, a lot of backpackers, and a lot of expats are always rooted into and trying to find that correct answer. How do I manage my money better while traveling? So I wanna talk about four different subjects on how I manage my money, build my net worth even more, and just keep myself above water without having to go back home and get a traditional job. Number Number one, just having money saved. Number two is investing and also getting rid of high interest rate credit cards. Number three, know the value of what you owed or what you're about to buy. And number four, just being ready for the future. Having saved money. We've all heard that line, save money, don't save money, inflation will eat it. So what do we do? Me personally, I have a three level savings account system that I use and level one, this is where I figure out how much I owe per month. And I bring this out to about five to six months of a total value. That amount is what I save into a savings account that I have access to pretty much immediately. I level two is where I take about three and a half months worth of my monthly expenses and I put into another savings account. This is gonna be another bank entirely different where I don't have immediate access, where I have to wait like a day to get that money. It does doesn't let me compulsively buy something or go crazy. When I start pulling money out of savings account number two, I start these flags go off saying, hey, David, you're starting to dip through your, your level two savings account. We need to start looking at what's going on and reevaluate our spending. And finally, number three, this is an online type of savings account where I'll usually put about a month or a month and a half of money and save it online. This account that I use, takes about three to five, up to seven days to actually transfer the money to my main checking account. If I ever access this account, this is where I will stop. I'll be like, okay, I need, I need to either get a job, I need to stop eating or drinking too much, whatever the case is, I need to stop going out and spending too much. I need to reevaluate what I'm doing. This doesn't always mean that I'm not making enough, it just means I'm spending too much. This eliminates any instant compulsive buying that you might do. In that week that you're waiting for that money, it gives me time to be like, okay, how do I do this? How do I reevaluate what I'm doing? That's how I do my three levels of savings. This money's being saved to protect you if something unexpected happens. Consistently investing money, large or small, and removing high interest rate bills or debts even. Investing money being large or small is a thousand times better than just having a boatload of money in a savings account, not doing anything for you financially. And when I say not doing anything, meaning inflation's gonna eat that money up and that money in that savings account, you're most likely not getting really anything back, maybe one or two cents every quarter is a return for having money in there. We talked about step one, saving money, and that's great, protecting you in case something of an emergency happens or something bad happens where you need it. But what about that other money, that investing money? How I invest my money is I have a small amount that comes out of my savings account. When I get any kind of pay, be it from YouTube, any side work or teaching jobs that I might do, I always take 60% of it and I throw it inside a savings account. Every month, my Fidelity account that I use for investments takes out a, a portion of that money and it divides it into my index funds and some other stocks I'm invested in. So every month, I am investing money without even knowing it is happening. Don't don't sit there every month like, oh, what do I gotta do? Just have it happen automatically. If you wanna invest more money that month, you're like, oh, you know what, I got an extra $2,000. I'm gonna invest it more into the index funds. Do it, creating an interest return of almost 7% per year without even thinking about it. But I usually talk a lot about travel, so I'm not a financial advisor, nothing like that. I'm just giving you what's helping me. If you do wanna see somebody that does a real good job about finances and stuff like that, check out Stephen Grabbit. This guy's awesome, he talks a lot about investing long-term. And ideally, every month I'm investing into some index funds or some stocks that are building my net worth every month without thinking about it, which is a beautiful thing. Money making money. As Western people, we usually divide the bill. That's just how our culture is. If we all go out, everyone's getting some beer, some drinks, some coffee. The problem is, is when you split that bill, it's very hard to split a bill when you have the biggest bill and everyone else has small ones. So always have smaller bills. The reason I say this is when we divide the bills, things get confused. Everyone gives their small amount that pays their portion. But sometimes people are like, oh yeah, I'll pay you back later, yada, yada, yada. And you end up taking all their money, you pay the 500 to the person, the, the waiter, the waitress, and when they bring back the change, sometimes you don't even get it. And then if you do tip, 
because everyone's going to be, oh, just leave a tip for like 20,000. You end up tipping for everybody. Don't just bring a bunch of big bills because it will actually hurt you in the long run. I've spent so much extra money because I never broke down. It usually is because I'm tipping for the whole table, which turns into being like, you know, 10, 15, $20. And the last point on this is getting rid of high interest. If you have high interest credit cards that are just kind of idling there, student loans, stuff like that, get rid of them as fast as you can. That's a good way to like be worry-free while you're abroad. Number three, knowing the value of the things that you owed or what you're about to buy. Every dollar you spend has a value of time that you spent to get that dollar. So how much of your life and time was that thing that you bought worth? This is a idea that I learned from an old mentor a long time ago. Everything we buy, be it coffee, be it a computer, it took time to earn this money for most of us. We worked nine to five, we made an hourly wage. When you put the hourly wage after all the taxes and everything, you don't look at this MacBook as a $2,000 MacBook. You look at it as a time of my life that I had to spend for this MacBook. Now, with that being said, I know a lot of people are like, well, David, you got a MacBook. I'm not saying go buy the cheapest thing. Definitely never just buy the cheapest thing because it's the cheapest thing. That's not always a solution. What I mean by this is to make sure the value of what you buy is acceptable for what it is. So I bought a MacBook because I edited on Final Cut Pro and it takes care of all my work, it takes care of my business. So for me, this MacBook costing two, 2,000 some dollars has a value that I can justify for the time I spent to actually purchase it. Another thing, consider buying things that have multiple purposes. If you're new to vlogging or photography or something like that, use your iPhone. Start off with the iPhone because it has a really nice camera on it. You can start vlogging with that. You save a lot of money because you're not spending a lot of money on a bunch of stuff. When I first started vlogging and traveling, I ended up buying a camera, a GoPro, a new iPhone. I bought three different cameras for the same thing, which, which makes no sense to me. I don't even use this camera that much. I use the GoPro sometimes, but I'm usually just using my iPhone phone because the camera is good. It's 4K, 30 frames, 60 frames a second, no problem. Try to eliminate other things. And a cool thing about this is it's really good for a minimalist life. I'm, I'm able to put everything in my backpack because everything serves more than one purpose. So I don't need to buy a bunch of different things. Maybe you could sell those extra cameras and put it into a stock market or a savings account or something like that. So be mindful of what you're buying because it does take your time to actually purchase it. And make sure you're not buying something that does something that something you already have does it. Number four, planning for the future and the unexpected. Planning when you go abroad, throwing everything out in regards to like quitting your job, selling everything, your plan needs to be pretty rock solid or at least a clear idea of what you're trying to accomplish or do. Not just, I'm gonna go to Asia and hope something happens. One thing to consider is if you're watching this video, you most likely speak English. And if you're going to places like South America or Asia, in a lot of parts of Europe, your English could actually be useful for education. My advice on this and part of the insurance process that I always recommend is get a TEFL. Even if you don't plan on being a teacher, just get a TEFL because it, when you get to stage three of your savings where you're getting down to your last thousand, you're like, oh man, I need to do something. I need more money. You at least have that TEFL to be like, I can go get a quick job, make a couple grand and then I can quit. Check the link below if you want to knock out 50% and get a full TEFL, you can do it online. Even if you don't plan on being a teacher, trust me, it is a nice little like, I really need to do something because I'm in trouble. And you just go on Facebook and find a quick teaching job. Most of these schools are gonna be asking you first thing, do you have a TEFL or a degree? Boom, you got a job. During the pandemic when Vietnam, the schools were shutting down and they weren't allowing teachers to teach, having a TEFL was a huge leverage that I saw on Facebook. And talking to some of my Vietnamese friends about this, when they saw TEFL posts saying, this is what I have, a lot of Vietnamese people went towards these people. And the last little tip for planning, make sure you have all your documents and you have backups of your documents. So have a couple extra IDs, have a couple extra credit cards, just extra stuff and never pack everything together in like one spot. I know if you're backpacking, you have your backpack, obviously everything's with you. When you go out in town, leave, leave one of your credit cards in your bag at home, leave one in your pocket, stuff like that. Cause you never know what someone's gonna snag your bag or something, you're gonna lose your wallet. So that sums up my four rules on how I build more money and maintain my finances while I'm traveling abroad. Ah, and that reminds me, and I know a lot of people don't wanna hear this. If you wanna save a lot of money, here is the tip right here. Stop drinking alcohol. One thing that I noticed is when I stopped drinking alcohol, I was saving almost 70% of the money that I was used to be spending. That's a huge number. 
And the reason is, is because it never ends. You buy the beer, that leads to the food, that leads to more beer, this leads to taxis because you don't drink and drive, right? Then you start getting bored and you're like, yeah, you know what, I wanna go out and go do something. Now you got more taxi fees, now you got bar fees, paying your friends beer fees because you buy everybody drinks because we all do that sometimes when we drink too much. And worst of all, you'll wake up in the morning missing $300, roll it over and seeing somebody you don't recognize. That is it. So I hope this information did help out a little, give you a little idea on how you can prepare yourself a little better when you travel abroad and not go broke. If you do like this type of video, let me know below under that like button, leave a comment. Let me know what is your travel tip if you were to give one on how you financially survive traveling abroad outside of your country. And if you aren't subscribed already, hopefully I won your subscription with this video and the information helped you out a lot. And until then guys, I'm gonna get out of here, check out some of these other videos, whatever's popping up over here. I will see you again. <laughs>